two years ago, if you see on my short to wear Joffy, my uncle Joff, um, he passed away, he did, about two years ago. Just don't want to live with no regrets, like I know he, he left with many regrets. Not many people have got it, so it must be like a high award from the borough. Yeah, I did actually read it and it said something about I can do something with sheep or <laughs> I can walk goats through town. Yeah, we had to move around a few times, we went to a few refuges. She had a hard hard time and like I say, she's, she still walks around now with a smile on. It's probably took a bit of a toll on my mum and like it would anyone because we're all human and she's in a lot of pain. Now these nights, like when I'm boxing, I know it makes her proud, so that's something that I'll, that will probably be my greatest achievement to bring good times back to my mum. I've come from nothing, and everyone that knows of me knows that I've come from nothing. I'm still ain't, I still ain't much now, I don't believe, do you know what I mean? Just a young kid with a dream, grew up in Donington, dealt with a lot of crap, and pushed through it to chase a dream. All right, I'm here in Telford with the terror of Telford, the Don of Donington, the champ himself, Mr. Liam Davis. How are you? I'm very well, yeah. What do you think of that? Just gave you a few little nicknames. Do you like any of them? Or? Yeah, yeah, the Don of Donington. I can roll with that one. Have you used that one before? Nah, Could I you? am though. You, I mean, you are. I've walked around. I'm seeing your face up everywhere. <laughs> that you are the man around here. Yeah. How's life? Oh, good. Yeah, very, very good. In fact, uh, a few. A few days away now from fighting, aren't we? I think it's 11 days and, uh, yeah, Telford's going to be packed out. Tickets have gone away. Well. The people of Telford are behind me again, which is um, massive for me. And, uh, yeah, 11 days till I get to show why I am the champ. Why you are the Don of Donington. Why I am the Don. Yeah. Don <laughs> um, I saw you put something... Look, let me put it this way. Are you just living your dream right now? Because I, I saw you put on your Instagram, you said something along the lines of, I used to dream of nights like this when I, when I was younger. And it was just like you beating Baluta in the corner, raising your hand and people cheering you. Are you living your dream or, or Yeah. What? Tell me. Yeah, boxing. Boxing's the only road I've ever known. So I believe now I'm in a position that it was always meant to be with a lot of hard work from myself and my team, obviously, that have been behind me and pushed me. So, yeah, it's something that's run deep in our family with my granddad boxing, my father boxing, and now me, I'm flying the flag. And uh, yeah, I've took it like to a place where we always hoped to be in. So it's just about keeping that momentum now. And uh, that's what I'm motivated to do, keep keep pushing on and uh, take what I can from the sport. Like I said, it's, it's the only thing I've ever known to do, so uh, there's no plan B. I heard you, I've heard you say that in a couple of interviews, there's, there's no plan B. T tell me about that. Well, boxing's, like I said, all I ever done. Grew up in boxing, there's photos on the wall when I'm a young lad. Uh, photos in my nan's house of being two, three years old drawing faces on one of them punch bags that yeah. you hit and a few tears after I hit it, draw a few what? tears on it. You're drawing tears on the punch bag? After, after round one, <laughs> a couple, after round two, a couple more bleeding nose. Right. Well, so you're visualising you bashing up this punch bag? That's it. Well, uh, just as we get back from the market, she brought me some gloves or something. So, yeah, boxing's um, always been part of me, my family. And yeah, it's only ever been the plan is to become a boxer. I remember when I was in school, I was quite naughty sometimes. And uh, yeah, I always used to think, well, I'm going to be a boxer anyway. And them teachers that probably used to think he's not mm -hmm. now probably looking and uh, thinking, oh, he's come through. So yeah, um, boxing's all I've ever known. Boxing's mostly all I've wanted to do. I have had times where I wanted to walk away from being young and dumb. But um, yeah, I've worked myself 
throughout my life hard to be in this position and um, now we're here I want to keep pushing on I want more and I think the cherry on top of the cake that we have built so far is the world title and now the WBC international and European super bantamweight champion Leon champion, the WBC international champion, and the British champion. I want to go back to the start of the Liam Davis journey, because I don't think people know a lot about you, um, and I want them to know more. I want to know more, like, what was life like early for Liam Davis? What was it like growing up? Where did you grow up? How did you grow up? Tell us. Yeah, life was tough, man. Um, when, I, when I was... You, you obviously, bro, my mum and dad had me when I think I was like 17, 16. So I grew up young and obviously they separated. And um, yeah, I lived with my mum. Always had a good relationship with my dad through boxing. And like I say, he's my father and my best friend probably and my coach as well. And we spend a lot of time together. But growing up, I lived with my mum at the time and we had a lot of hard times. Um, Went, my mum went been through a lot in life and uh, now these nights like when I'm boxing I know makes her proud so that's something that I'll that will probably be my greatest achievement to bring good times back to my mum after the stuff we had, she had to deal with and she always done her best for me my young brother and sister but yeah we had to move around a few times she went to a few refuges and um she had a hard, hard time and like I say, she's, she still walks around now with a smile on, she's positive and it's, it's probably took a bit of a toll on my mum and like it would anyone because we're all human and she's in a lot of pain. And uh, yeah, it's, life wasn't, life ain't easy and simple is it, but that's where you work hard to, for better and I feel like we started in the gutter come from nothing, lived in Donington, which is a place we're always loved, but um, I'd like to see us end up having a nice place somewhere else out of Donington and uh, yeah, give something back to my mum for all the shit she went through. How's that, because that sounds like hardship for you, for your mum, for your family, how's that helped make who you are today? Because I, it, the, the thing for me is, I think when I was like 18, 19, I was amateur and I wasn't really giving it everything. I got to a point where I just could have give up and just been a normal human and not brought the best out of myself and give the best opportunity to myself or as well as giving a better life to people around me and positive I don't mean in financially, I mean positivity and something to be proud of and I feel like I am doing that now. And uh, that's what pushes me to keep getting more. So it must make you proud to to have success and show your mum, look, I'm I'm making it here. Look, look at where we were and look at where I am now, and I'm bringing you with me. That must be a very fulfilling feeling for you. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. Never really say it to my mum, but my mum, I love my mum obviously, and that plays a massive part in my mind, like to bring better and better times and the um, two years ago if you see on my shorts I wear Joffy, my uncle Joff, um, he passed away you did about two years ago so I think when that happened it was just before the British title fight and that's give me as sad as it is that gave me the kick up the ass because he was a very good footballer and um wrong decisions in life, being around the wrong people, didn't let him fulfil his dreams. So, uh, yeah, as sad as that is, and that's why I always wear them on my shorts, that really gave me the motivation and kick up my ass to bring good times to the family. And like I said, that was my mum's younger brother and uh, my best uncle. So, yeah, that's... Um, 
that was something that really changed. And I think that's when you've seen the best of me. Since then, I fought Leech and Baluta. Mm -hmm. And I feel like since the Leech fight and obviously losing my uncle, that's when I believe my dad or anyone anyone in my family can see the change in me. I've really given it everything. And I just don't want to live with no regrets. Like, I know he, he left with many regrets. It's mad. You could get these sources of motivation from everywhere that, like... They put the fire in your belly. So you've got your uncle, Joffy, who sadly passed away, your granddad, who's got you into this whole thing as well. You know, making your mum proud, making your dad proud, and all of that just adds into the fire that seems to fuel you. Yeah, it's just in life, I think as you get older, you, um, you learn a lot, not just about yourself, but about life and how it, how it works, and how it works for you especially. So... Um, yeah, I've lived and learned the hard way most of the time, but I'm very lucky and grateful to have the people around me and support that I have had to keep me on the right track and, like I say, push me into this position I'm in now because it's not just about what I've done, it's about the people I've had around me. And like I say, my dad has like been phenomenal with me and if I ever had kids, definitely I'd want to be as, as long as I could be half as good as he's been to me, then that's all they can ask for. So I'm very lucky to have him helping me, supporting me and uh, being with me good times and bad because we're on this journey together and like I say, we're going to finish it together no matter where it goes, we're going to be there and he's going to be in my corner, which is massive for me. What were you like as a kid? Uh, a bit naughty, yeah. Little terror. Yeah, I was naughty, yeah. Always thought I knew better, like most kids. <laughs> oh, yeah. Always thought I knew better. Always thought um, it was my way or no way. And that's what I'm saying. Like, probably without my dad, no one else could tell me about my dad. And that's still now. I'm <laughs> 27 now. And uh, I don't think anyone 27 would listen and respect their dad as much as me because... That's something I've learned that he always has my best interests and yeah, he changed me. I, I feel like as a kid, I was young and dumb at times. Like my friends probably who would be watching, like people that are close to me and been around me would would know what I mean. But yeah, it's, my life changed massively, not just in um, support or doing well, just my perspective on life and how I look at life now and... Um, what I want from life. I want, the main goal is to be happy, my family to be healthy and happy and um, whatever else is a bonus. You happy at the moment? Very happy, yeah. Just got married man now, ain't I? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's another motivation, see. Mm -hmm. I just promised the girl I love for the rest of my life that I'll make us a good life. And so, that's something that also motivates me. I want to have a nice home. I want to have family and uh, I want her to be happy. Happy wife, happy life. And, yeah, that's uh, what they say. <laughs> that's, that's what I aim for. Good man. Um, so what, when did boxing into your life? I know you, you mentioned it at the top, like uh, it's like in your blood anyway. I think you're a third generation boxer now. Your granddad was at it, your dad was at it as well. So when did boxing really, when did you start thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do this or did it just happen? I think it just happened. So where we're in now is that obviously the gym's been here for touching 30 years now and um, before I was born, I think. And when I was growing up, my dad was an amateur then and my granddad run the gym and you had all the lads here. And I'm sure they all remember I used to be up here before their fight. They all used to get ready here and then box downstairs and I'd be up here trying to spar off them before they were <laughs> going to have a fight. So... <laughs> Something I've always wanted to do, something I've always been passionate about. And um, I liked football as well. I enjoyed football. I uh, wasn't a bad footballer, to be honest. And what position? Striker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Big man up top. Scored some goals I did. Right foot, left foot? Right footed I am. Skillful? Whip it. Yeah. I'd say. I bet. Whip it. I bet. We come to 16 and... Um, like I said, I had to make a decision and with the help of my dad in my ear, he said, look, we've got to do the boxing now. And um, yeah, I stepped away from football 
haven't played football in a long time, but when I was younger, I used to love it. I used to love the tournaments, you know, yeah. you could day out, go there, have a pat lunch, mm -hmm. you're there for the day. Are you going to tell us you, you could have gone pro and you would have... Like, oh, no, I'd have never it, been. Every guy's got that story, right? Oh, yeah, but my... Oh, I'd have never been yeah, pro footballer. No. I'm just saying I loved it and I yeah, want yeah. a bad footballer. Yeah, I want fair. the best, but I want the worst. <laughs> fair, fair. Okay, so bo but boxing was the route that you took. You kind of had to anyway. It was just in, in your blood as well. Um, how, how did it happen that you started having amateur fights and stuff as well? Was it almost just plain sailing or were you going to leave boxing at any point? Like... Talk to me. Yeah, so I actually, because obviously my dad and granddad were running the gym, they put a home show on like, I think it's like two, three weeks after my 11th birthday because you couldn't fight till 11 then. Okay. And uh, I had my first fight then, went on to have 100. And I hit a stage, um, I was losing to guys that are, just because my fitness more than anything. And... Um, yeah, I lost my granddad, and being a teenager and daft, I, would, I had in my mind that things weren't the same since I lost my granddad, and yeah, I'd blame that, look for a way out, an excuse, and I actually, my granddad was very good friends with Arthur Daly and James Conway, and they run a gym in Kings Heath, mm -hmm. and I uh, sat down with my dad, and he said, I think you should move there. Uh, just travel there and he this is what I mean he helped me pay petrol I was like young and I used to travel up there an hour and a half to get there an hour and a half back and uh, I started then and I started enjoying boxing this new surroundings and um, yeah I started doing all right again so that was that was like the second chapter mm -hmm. in my career then because I was like 20 and I didn't want to be out anymore I didn't want to mess up I want I was enjoying it so it wasn't like a chore anymore it was back to a hobby mm -hmm. it was a long old drive there and back I used to leave at five o'clock not get back till half ten keeps you out of trouble yeah <laughs> so um it was long hard but it's probably one of the best decisions my dad made for me as well as many more he helped me make but yeah that gave me the second second gear in me second chapter for my boxing career and yeah, looking back, it was one of the best things I'd done, really. And then mm -hmm. when I I had 100-odd fights and I lost in the ABA final and I thought I was very unlucky. And as I was getting disheartened, my dad said, I think we should go pro now. And, yeah, I didn't want to go back up to Northampton travelling because I, I felt like I made that change. I knew what I wanted and I knew not to blame anyone else uh, for my excuses. So... Yeah, that's when I started working back with my dad. Obviously, when I was up at King's Eve, me and my dad would still do bits anyway. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, so I went pro in uh, 2018. And four, f five years ago, is that now? Yeah. Five, five years, years ago. Ago. It was five in the December, five. so about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was the best decision I made. I'm really like... I watch now, the lad I fought in my first fight is fighting lads that are 10 and 0 now, so I straight in at the it deep end. Right and in, um, you? you love that, don't you? You just seem to just take the fights that are a bit harder. Yeah, of course. I didn't know at the time, no. but I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't mind. I couldn't even tell you his name now, yeah. but he was a tough man and um, I didn't get a pro debut knockout and make it look easy, but I had a tough tough challenge and it set me up to be in this position now 13 fights after I'm um, uh, where I am you are where you are look that period between chapter one and chapter two chapter one being you as a kid then you lose your granddad chapter two your dad brings you back into it and you, you start getting the bug again what was that period like between chapter one and chapter two and were there any moments where you really thought I'm done with boxing I don't need this anymore yeah it's funny because I think it was last week, me and my dad went somewhere and I was looking through old messages, you know, on Facebook. And as I was scrolling, I must have scrolled too far and it was a conversation of me missing the gym and ignoring my phone because just out doing mischief, no good. That's you and your dad having a conversation. Yeah, and he messaged me saying, where are you? You're not in the gym. And uh, I can remember now, actually, I was just out with my mates up to no good and um yeah you didn't have to keep 
keep on at me really and that's what I mean by I'm very lucky because you ain't got that support it's the easy route out in it so mm -hmm. and that's why you see plenty of good boxers amateurs that don't make it as professionals and yeah we had a conversation you said you need to get to the gym and I replied saying about you don't understand dad I just I'm not in a good place and this is like 17 18 year old me thinking I knew it all and new hardship where I've realised there's a lot harder times than that I have been through since then that that doesn't even come close to so yeah he was always on my case when I was <laughs> thinking I'd say it's a good job he was because I wouldn't be sat here now talking to you headlining in a few days time so um, yeah at the time I was thinking why 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 am I getting all the stick for this just mm -hmm. let me Leave me alone. Do, yeah, leave me alone, <laughs> let me do what I had to do. And looking back now, it's um, it's like, how lucky was I to have someone like that on my case because I wouldn't have, um, wouldn't have achieved anything in mm -hmm. the sport and probably would have lived my life in regret. That's, that's, uh, yeah, that's a great way of putting it. And like, it feels like any time you were trying to stray or your mind was straying, your dad just sort of dragged you back in and put you on the right path. That's a... It's a good place to be. Yeah, and that's, you don't get, like, my dad's one in a billion for sure. And like I said, I've learned that that's, that is that is fatherhood, but not everyone's got that in them to do that. And I bet at times he felt like giving up on me himself. Do you know what I mean? Which would, sitting here now is understandable. So, yeah, it's it's been a roller coaster of a ride. And... Um, I feel like, do you know, when you go on one of them rides and you're chuddering up, mm -hmm. that's, that's what we're doing at the minute. That's the scary and, uh, part though, right? That's like, you can see down, you can see how far you could potentially fall if it all you know, comes apart. Yeah, but... I'll get do, terrified shit myself going when it goes yeah. up. Yeah. Do you know me though? And this, this is how I see life. Boxing, it'd be horrible to lose and no one wants to lose when you work as hard as me or probably any other boxer that's working their ass off to make something of themselves and um, make memories, win titles and try and build a bit of a legacy for themselves. But I see it now and this is why I've got no fear of fighting any man because I see a lot, you can lose family members and uh, can lose relationships with people and a lot worse than losing a boxing match. And, don't get me wrong, if I ever lost, I'd be devastated. But I do believe that you lose a lot more things worse in life than a boxing match or... Like I say, you can't knock a tryer, can you? So you you give it everything mm -hmm. and um, what will be, will be. Well, you've got an O, right? You're 13 and O, you've got that O. So you're saying you're not afraid to lose it? No, no, and that's why I'd take the big fights. I'm not bothered about these big fights that could come on the horizon or a big opportunity comes that people write me off. People have written me off a numerous of times now and amateur, professional, and uh, it's, it's just something that motivates me. I know I put the hard work in and I feel like if anyone deserves to be a world champion or uh, do well out the sport, it's me because how much I have put in and I'd say since the last two years that has just like trebled, quadrupled because my effort is non-questionable. I put, give it everything and I um, feel like that's what's made me the better fighter I am. And this fight, I feel like it will show the improvements I have done over the last year, year or two. So my first one, my first proper fight, say, where they questioned me was with Leach. It was a 12 rounder, first time ever doing 12 mm -hmm. rounds. I get the question marks, prove people wrong. I flipped the script and went to the other end of the spectrum fighting someone in Baluta and I handled that and done it. And uh, I hurt my hands in the fight, which I just had to keep to a game plan and outbox him. So I feel like this one really will show the full improvements and the real me. And I do see myself stopping Cunningham, which he's a good fighter, Cunningham. I do respect him. He, he's done it. But I do believe he is in trouble. Well, look, we'll come back to, to Cunningham 
uh, shortly. But tell me, how much does it motivate you when people do write you off and where people perhaps don't give you the recognition that you feel that your talents deserve? How much does that fuel and motivate you? Yeah, it does, it does fuel me because I still feel like um, I know plenty of people in life that have got nothing and plenty of people that have got a lot in, in this life, friends and just people I know of. And I still put myself in the category that I've got nothing with people that have got nothing but a good art. These people have nothing but a good art and I'm still in that category and I'm doing everything I can to make sure by the time I'm done, I've got something that's made all this hard work, sacrifice, hardship, all worth it in the end. Does it frustrate you if you see fighters who you might think have less talent than you, perhaps don't know, have more followers than you, perhaps be more famous than you? How do you feel about that? Does that frustrate you? Uh, not in like followers and that. That don't. Int- I'm I'm not chasing fame. I want to. I'm chasing a little bit of fortune and then I'm off. <laughs> I'm happy with my life. I just want repaying for all the hard work I've put in. But more in so on the fact that he's on about people that are getting bigged up more and I feel like they ain't done as much as me. Yeah, 100%. You can, I, I could name a few. You, pro, you could name a few that people are like getting made to be this, that and the other. Everyone's face fits in something, do you know what I mean? Maybe mine don't, but how are they going to stop me when I keep winning? I keep proving I'm all wrong, do you know what I mean? There's only so so many times they can shut the gate till it opens and I'm the first one there and I in the queue. So, yeah, I think it will all come. I'm not bothered about followers, not bothered about fame. It'd be nice to get a bit more respect, but... Everyone has their opinions. No one really knows me, do you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm not really out there as much and uh, I don't try and live a life like on social media to make out I'm this, that and the other because mm-hmm. everyone's got an opinion and in life there's going to be doubters. Like So I, I just soak it up and uh, we see what happens in the end when we finish up because I do believe I'll come out good in the end and you'll still have someone say something about me, Absolutely. but as long as the people that mean most to me see that I'm all right, um, I'll sleep well at night. Well, the people that mean most to you, and you, you're talking about how no one knows you, I think people in Telford know you, the way, the, the way people rock up for your fights, the fan base that you've got here. What, what does it mean to come from Telford, and how much do your fans here mean to you? See, yeah, that means more to me than what anyone ever can say, because you can see how many tickets I'm going mm-hmm. selling, People are coming to support me. And to me, that just shows they know I'm a genuine lad, like I believe, got good art, do anything for anyone that I could. And um, yeah, I don't think I'm this, I'm that, than the other. Like I say, you can have a pound in your pocket, you could have a hundred pound in your pocket. If you're gonna stop and say hello to me, I'll speak to you, just the same as I speak to the man with the hundred pound in his pocket. And um, like I say, in Telford, we all, I've, I've come from nothing and everyone that knows of me knows that I've come from nothing. I'm still ain't, I still ain't much now, I don't believe, do you know what I mean? Just a young kid with a dream, grew up in Donington, dealt with a lot of crap and pushed through it to chase a dream that I'm, I'm chasing. And um, yeah, I believe that's, that's more important than any other followers like I say, on social media or anything. I've got people coming to support me, paying their hard-earned money to come and watch me on a night and uh, losing their voice because they want me to win that much, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. shouting. So that's something, that, that's probably one of my best achievements. That would mm-hmm. always probably be one of my greatest achievements, having the people at Telford that do know me, heard of me, seen me once or twice, just bumped past and said hello. Them supporting me and wishing me well is something that you couldn't ever buy. You're Freeman of Telford, is that right? Freeman of the Borough, yeah. Cool. Don't know what it means, but, <laughs> but I'll you do take what you it. want when you want, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, did you get like a little certificate or something? Yeah, like, I got a certificate. Like? Not many people have got it, so it right. must be must be um, like a high award from the borough. And uh, yeah, it's up. 
be tough but actually in the house and um yeah, I did actually read it and it said something about I can do something with sheep or <laughs> I can walk goats through town, but maybe <laughs> when Queensbury start paying me more, I can buy a goat and a, a herd of sheep or whatever and um, then I'll be all right to walk through. There we go. Donington. The, the Don of Donington, the sheep herder <laughs> of Donington. Unbelievable. What, what a thing to suddenly have on your resume as well. Um, speaking of your resume, now the, your, your kind of breakout fight I think was when you when it was in lockdown and you boxed Sean Cairns for the, yeah. for the English title now I was reading about this and I understand you got very late notice and it was down at bantamweight as well how on earth did you get yourself down to bantamweight at late notice and uh, were, were you sure about taking that fight at late notice I'll be as honest here like this is the honest I can be so I was working on the bins and um I had a call off my manager, Errol Johnson, and he said, I think it was 18 days notice, and they said about this English title fight on um, Sky Sports, and I, I was saying about my weight and stuff, and after we got off the phone, I knew my dad would ring me within a couple of minutes, <laughs> and I got the phone call off my dad, and he said, we're taking this fight, we are. He's decided. You come to the gym. <laughs> come to the gym after. And uh, we check your weight and we start training. Uh, I've done the odd run because I've always done a bit. And um, I wasn't doing much, though, mind. This was a, it was a during lockdown. So what? Yeah. How, how, much, how much was the UK locked down at that point? Do you remember? It was in the November. I think it started in the March, didn't it? It was working because... One earning no money, had bills to pay, so that's why I started on the bins. And yeah, back to I was obviously when I got the phone call off my dad, I was sort of sat in the van thinking, knew my weight was high for my first 10 round. I only ever done six rounds before, and you question yourself, don't you? Um, like anyone would, it was a, my first big ask, so. I come to the gym that day, I think I weighed like 61 kilo, something about 61, 62 kilo. And um, I had a conversation with my, sort of, had my dad tell me we'd take this fight. And um, yeah, it was, it was good because I was still um and an R and like as honest I can be about the weight and how, how it was 18 days out. And we started training, like I said, started training hard, as hard as we could dieted as much as I could, mm -hmm. um, starved mostly. And uh, yeah, we got there. It was a good experience. Me and my dad went down and uh, stayed in the bubble. So it was my first like eye opener to what you can get out of boxing and mm -hmm. the perks of the perks of taking these big fights. So yeah, we went there, made the weight, made the weight fine, like walking around the hotel with like Conor Ben and Alan Babick, stuff <laughs> like people like that, a bit like blown away. It was you quite were starstruck. Yeah, not starstruck. Like I can't believe, like I'm actually here now yeah, yeah. and um, foot through the door, sort of. Yeah, thing. And then it obviously happened. I boxed well, probably not great. I was a bit drained, and um, I done the done the job on him in six rounds. So yeah, that was my first proper buzz back and then uh, it blew off from there, signed with Queensbury um, a few months after. And you found your way home? Yeah, and since then everything's gone great. I boxed my first one for Queensbury in Telford, mm -hmm. which was massive, then I went to Birmingham a few times. And then, um, yeah, I asked, asked for the big fight with the British. I actually, when he fought Chris Bourke, I actually remember being on the bins and uh, taking a screenshot saying, tagging Frank and Queensbury saying, give me the winner. Yeah. And there you have it. That's there you it. Have it. You, you manifested it. Um, didn't you, so talking about this Jason Cunningham fight, wasn't you sort of half calling out Jason Cunningham before and his, his manager laughed you off? Is, is that a thing? Or? Yeah, yeah, they did. Um, when I fought Dixon Flores in Birmingham and he boxed Brad Foster on an interview after, can't remember who with, they asked me what's next. 
and I said I'd love the winner of tonight's main event. And uh, yeah, I seen Steffi Bull tweeted. I wonder if you could get the tweet. You just put lol. So <laughs> it, it's funny how life turns, isn't it? Now they got to come see me to get back the marble. So they've got to come through me. And um, like I said, I would have took that fight then. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I, I generally would have took the fight then. And I believe if I box the Liam Davis that box that night, I'd splatter him. So um, it's come at a perfect time for me. And uh, we're going to see who has the last laugh in a couple of next week, aren't we? Who has the last law? Well, this is um, to confirm it's July 29th. It's TNT Sports. You are the, uh, the first main event, the first big show to launch this new channel, the rebrand of, of BT Sport. Must give you a bit of a buzz as well, right? Yeah, it's good. Um, yeah, obviously, <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is big, isn't it? And um, I'm sh I always say, do you know, when I look back, I'm sure I'll see it as like it's big, how big it is then at the You're minute. You're just in it now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm just in it and um, don't overthink anything and just get on with it and uh, looking forward to the fight. And it's the first one. I bet best off starting it with a bang, eh? Is he, uh, is he the toughest opponent of your career? Uh, he's a different opponent. He's the most experienced, I'd say. Don't know about toughest. We've got to find out. Mm. But yeah, um, he's the most experienced. Truthfully, I don't think the toughest, but I'm prepared for the toughest. So there's actually been a little bit of animosity and beef in the build-up to this one. Um, obviously, you had the face-to-face the -face where I was in the middle and at York Hall. Um, there was the tweets and all stuff like that. Well, why has there been animosity in the build-up to this fight with Jason Cunningham? I just think he's put a bit of a needle in. He sent me some private messages and uh, I've replied and then obviously we've seen each other. And then we, like I said, we both said, our bit, well, I said my bit anyway. And it's um, one of them. It reared me up for the fight and just makes me want to do a number on him. I'm sure he's the same. And that's why I think it'll be a good fight if he if he can keep keep that same attitude. We're in for a, a barnstorm, hopefully. Let's hope so. What, what's he saying to you in these private messages? What's he DMing you? Just about he's going to smash me and this, that <laughs> and the other. And the, I was a bit surprised myself, but uh, yeah, no one's seen that bit, have they? Yeah, he's a video, he must have been running, saying I can't wait to smash her and everyone wants me to smash her. Well, he sent you a video of him running and saying, yeah, oh, I'm going to smash your head in like that. Yeah, he did, Could yeah. Could see this video? Because uh, it's on Instagram, I think it's, uh, they don't show. Right. You know, once they've been like oh, sent, so they don't come up again. Sort of yeah, okay, yeah. But you've seen it, it's up oh, there, Oh, I've it? seen it, yeah, and then... Obviously, I said my bit when I seen him face to face, so we're going to see, aren't we? You think you can stop him then? You mentioned it earlier. Tell us why you think you can, you can stop the Iceman. I just, I just think that this will be my best performance. I've, been, um, I've learned a lot over my last couple of fights. But, like, I ain't really showed my full potential. I've cruised through them. I've done what I've had to. And um, this one, I'm really eager to show what I am about and that I can go a level above and I do believe I will stop him. I spar and uh, they've been going down so I've got little gloves on, uh, a bit more spite because I want to hurt him mm -hmm. and uh, yeah I do see myself stopping him. Um, what round I don't know but I think when I do touch him he's going to um, realise that I'm no joke. He says he's going to humble you. I'm humble as they come anyway. I just give him a load of stick, I know, because he's tried to give me some behind the scenes. And then when I've seen him, I've given it him, and the cameras obviously were on them. But yeah, I'm as humble as they can be, to be honest. You can, I think you can see that yourself. But yeah, I've, I've got something to prove and a bit of a chip on my shoulder. And I've got to fight him, I know. So this is, this is, not going to be nice. We're going going to have it out. So at the minute, I have got really nothing nice to say, and don't really care what he says. I'm going to uh, let my fist do the talking, and like I say, we can shake hands after and be friends after. Let me get your thoughts on uh, a couple of other fights before I let you go. Um, Inoue against Fulton is also happening next week. Very top 
of the division that you're in. How do you see that fight going? Um, a good fight. I, I, my, to be fair, I, I see it going like not a barnstorm, a new way pressing a lot, Fulton being relaxed. He's got very American style where he don't panic and he's quite calm. But I do see a new way out beating him. Maybe on point, so I don't see him stopping him. But um, we'll see. We'll see. Is the new A big? I don't know how big. When does the power level out? Mm. And um, yeah, I just think Fulton's made for him. So he don't really hit hard, I don't believe. Not that I've seen. But he's a smooth boxer. And I just see um, him lasting the distance. But a new A beating him on points. Are you looking at them as future opponents now, at this point? Well, yeah, of course I am. I already said to my manager, it'd be one hard, hell of a hard night. But if they can send me to Japan after this, I'll go. I'll get the plane ticket with a smile on my face, happily. How do you box someone like Naoya in a way? Well, for me, I just have to try and keep it long, wouldn't I? And um, like I said, I just think, this is the way I see it. You know, when Canelo kept going up and up, and then he come to Bivol and Bivol was big and the power levelled out and all his advantages levelled out because he, he went a weight too big. Mm-hmm. When does that happen to Inoue? And um, next week we'll see for him when he fights Fulton, but I'm a big super bantamweight, I'm strong. And um, yeah, like I said, I'd, I'd go to Japan happily. I know it'd be an hard night, but I'd happily go and turn up swinging. You go to Japan. Will you go to York Hall next month when Dennis McCann takes on your former opponent, Yonit Baluta? Will you go and uh, what do you think of that fight? Yeah, if they invite me, I'm happily going off. You're it... invited? Yeah, all right then. <laughs> you can pay for my hotel. <laughs> but you can sense. take me some food. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I'd go. But I think it'll be a good fight. Mm-hmm. I think um, they've obviously sparred before and uh, McCann feels like he got the better of him. Do believe there'd probably have been a big weight difference in the spa. Bigger gloves, bigger ring probably. York all small. It's not gonna be a massive ring. Blue is gonna do what Blue does, make you work hard. And I think he will question McCann at some point. He will question him, but um see if McCann can get through it. But I do expect McCann on points in that one, yeah. So you mentioned there about the the potential size of them when they spar. Do you think McCann has got false confidence from those spars, from potentially being heavier with bigger gloves on? Well, he's probably not thought about it too much, but I I haven't thought about it much, but it just makes sense to me where I've seen McCann and seen he goes big, blows up big, and um, I just don't believe Baluta goes up too big. He's, a, he's, he's quite a small guy, so... Um, I think it's going to be more of an even playing field when they do fight. They've got little gloves on. they both got to make one, two, two. And um, I don't think it's going to be as easy as McCann's thinking, but this is the fight he needs. He, ne- he needs to uh, fight one of these guys, and Balut's coming off a good win, so I think Balut's confidence will be there. And uh, I think it'll go two ways. Balut will either get to him, or McCann will outbox him, stick to a game plan. McCann knows what to do, doesn't he? What I've done. I've, the I've blueprint sh- I've, is there, I've right? I've showed them all how to do it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I'm sure whoever wins will call me out. And like I say, I'm, I'm up for anything, but um, they've got to get through this. I'm going to get through Cunningham, and then we're going to see where we end up. But my number one, I, I'm going to say this, I want Marlon Tapals. That's my number one. World champion. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's the fight I'd want. Straight after this? Yeah. Okay, well look, he's, he's going to see this, I'm sure. We'll, we'll tag him in. But I th- I'm very excited about the future of Liam Davis. You keep taking hard fights and you keep winning them. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Tell me one more thing. On the Dennis McCann thing, you were sat ringside with him at your call. And you seemed to be like, he was doing a bit of this, you were doing a bit of this. There seemed to be a bit of chat going on there. What can you tell me? Are you sort of setting up a fight for the future? Do you think it will happen? Talk to me. Yeah, I think the fight will happen. Dennis, Dennis is all right, man. I, I think he's a, he's a good kid. 
like I say, we have a bit back and forth and we know we probably will fight and that's that, but the mutual respect's there and uh, it'll be a hell of a fight, wouldn't it? It's got to be a headline somewhere big. Got to be. We both understand that and um, yeah, he tells me he thinks he'll win and I tell him I'll beat him. So uh, we got. I told him get through Baluta. I'm going to get through this one and then we'll see. But when it happens, I don't know. I, I've been ready. Like my resume shows I'm ready to go. But um, hopefully after this one, they ask for it. BT, TNT Sports, Frank Warren, Queensbury can uh, make it as big as it deserves to be. And uh, we can rock and roll and find out really who is the top dog. Well, Jason Cunningham's in your way and uh, Jason Cunningham is actually there. He's, he's watching you. Um, so I don't know if you want to give him a wave or say hello, but have you got a message for Jason Cunningham down the lens to just close off today? Just be ready. Make sure you don't bring no excuses and bring my new belt. Liam, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Cheers.